Whoa. Hello, a sneeze. This is so boring, but golly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right.
I don't get it. It's
I'm gonna try one mode and see if it does pay out. If it doesn't, I'm out.
How the fuck do I do that? Where do you fuck? Fuck it. I'm not fucking with that anymore.
Are you god of shitting with me? the fuck? There we go. <clears throat> and I'm gonna to go down there and have a look. What the fuck is out there? Hmm. 
What's that? Gosh, that was close. Mm, nope. Don't you see the boat in the far away there? This is gonna be the wing as fuck.
Hey, I'll come to the hospital. I'm not too far away, so... Hello, boys. Yeah. I didn't check in. Should I check in? I'll give you the money. Let's have a look at you then. Okay. You can't hear me? I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look. Hey, looking at my nipples. They're not injured, are they? Oh no, let's have a look here. Why is it always my like abdomen? There we go. Feel better? Yes. Well, that's good. Mm. Yeah. Got in a little bit of a motorcycle accident. Yeah. I banged up my car as well, so <clears throat> I have to fix it. Yeah. Are you going to fix it? Yeah, I'll do it at a garage. I'm a local garage guy. Yeah. Well, I was gonna go ride my murder murder cycle. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, you hear me. Strange. I hear him just fine. Yeah. Can't hear him right now? Oh, he's not saying anything right uh, now. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, now he's laughing. Oh. You hear that? And now he's sucking a straw. <laughs> Uh, must be something if he was with his ears.
Hi, it's only. Nope, I haven't found the code for it. Oh, really? Oh, gosh, yeah, I haven't found anything yet. Oh, golly, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I've been... I haven't been looking that hard though, so yeah. I've been up the... Huh? Easy spot? Oh. Oh, really? Really? Uh, uh, have you checked all the open garages? It's outside of the city. Not in the city. Okay. So that gives me one new clue. Um, that actually gives me a hell of a lot of clues because if it's not inside a city zone, it could either be by the pairs. But I, I don't think because that's kind of city limit. Yeah, I would rather suggest uh, Sandy. Alrighty then, let's go and have a look then. Do our best because I found one location, but it's not really worth anything. So. Weed. And then uh, Nesby found those buds yesterday, but they don't pay out. Buds? I have no clue what a bud is, but yeah, you know. I gotta turn my radio way up. You're low. Hold on, let's see. No, I turned you up max now. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue. I know how to process the buds, but the, the I need. I'm missing one ingredient, and that's the some kind of liquid. For what? To make the. A package of buds. Liquid, are you looking for? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, add it now. Uh, is, it, is it an A? Does it start with an A, or does it start with the? I don't think it's the acid. I think it. A. Uh, I can go up there and check. It goes fast enough because that's in that old vials. Where you have that old gas station? Yeah, I have a bunch of that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But I'm. But Nesby that's hasn't. Poppy, that's for poppy seed, right? Yeah, poppy seed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes. That makes. Um, heroin? Yeah, because Nesby's found uh, where you pick up the seeds. Oh, yeah, we've had. I have a bunch of the A's if he needs it. Yeah. But I haven't found a location for that aid. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't found that. I can show you. Uh, I can show you. Uh, I can show you. Uh, 
see if you help me find this bench, because I don't really give a fuck about that stuff. I just want to have the stuff that's in the bench. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally get you. I've been looking for that bench a long time because I'm missing the laundry mat card for it. Yeah, but I'm... Exactly, it is, and there's a lot of useful stuff, but I'm, I'm going to check the scrapyard, maybe to place it at the scrapyard. No way, eh? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Scrapyard is the kind of the make sense part. But it could also be by Trevor's house? Trevor, uh, oh, it could be by Trevor's house. I don't remember where it is, though. That's the camper in Sandy. In Sandy City. Because there's nothing at the scrapyard. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, somebody also said it was. I think they're talking to Delilah when they said that, but they said what it's like in New York City. I don't know if it's a hint or if they're just messing with Delilah from the song. Uh, that's the thing. They could actually be. They could actually be messing a lot with them. Because I've heard hints. And they don't make sense whatsoever. Because remember, we were supposed to have that bench in three weeks ago. Uh, it just got in like four days ago. Exactly. And they were saying that it already was in and then it wasn't, so... Yeah, I'm almost there. I'm gonna go check Stab City. Yeah, I'm heading into Trevor's house now, so we'll see. Nope, definitely not in Trevor's house, that's for sure. Huh, what else could it be? Uh, oh, golly. Kind of walked in, right? Mm hmm. It was, it was unlocked, right? You could just walk yeah. inside. Yeah, you can just walk inside. That's the thing, though. There is a lot of locations. It could also be the Air Force Base because that's. There is a lot of benches there. And there is a lot of open buildings where well, they could hide it. It's like bench bench, but it's like. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could either be a bench bench or it could be a circle bench. I think it's the thing that we had at the last one where you walk up and it's like a guy. No, well the bench that was at the old black market, it wasn't really a bench. It was just a blue circle. Yeah, but they turned it into a bench. Exactly. And it depends, though, if it looks like what it looks like. But I think it could be looking like a... Uh, uh, 
what do you want to say? Like a, a blue working table? You haven't been up here in this in Sandy in what, a week or so? Could be in the chicken coop. Up in Toledo. Yeah, I could it could be almost or it could be in that old house. That meth house. Yeah. Uh you're talking about uh grandma's? Uh yeah, yeah. That's right. Still there. No, there's nothing in it. You took out meth? Yep. Why? I have no clue. It's it's empty there for me. I was down there what well, a couple of days ago and there was nothing in it. And I've been checking those local spots. We're in change the new the the motel in Sandy back to the shit motel, so I wonder if something's here. Shit motel? Yeah, mm, it was a it? nice one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's now like run down. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're actually. Yeah, I see that. Alright, time to unlock doors. That's that motel? Yep. Yeah, there's definitely some open stuff here, but I don't see any obvious signs, so we'll see when we find it. I usually go lurking all over town and find weird shit. I also found that found uh, mission fell out of yesterday by accident, so... I think it's a heist of some type. What the fuck? I think I might have found something, but it's like they didn't do the door right. Okay. Yeah, door act like this before. There's got to be something to that shitty hotel, since they changed it out suddenly. Actually, never found duct tape. We think we might. Have, I might have found where the bench was, but I don't know if it is or not. Where? Um, the doors. So it, I've never seen this door act like this. So it's kind of weird. I can tell you, there's a blue arrow, so you'll know. In front of the door, or when you go inside the door. When you go inside, it's on the ground. The thing is, I can't go in this door. It's like weird. I'm gonna show you this, and I just need to know if it's like messed up or not. So you'd walk right in the door. 
There's no passcode anymore. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, I heard that you moved it. No worries. Uh, We're well, looking. <laughs> We're definitely looking, though. I actually just learned where it is. So I'm looking for duct tape. Oh, duct tape. Well, you, you learned where it is? Like, we could, like, buy it off you, or? No, because I learned where it is. Like, not learned where it is by hunting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No. Nah. Trying to test things. Yeah, yeah. Duct tape? Gosh. What? No, he didn't hunt for it. He found it by accident. That's what he said. Oh. And he can't share the intel with us. Oh. Yeah. No, oh, which is fine. I love actually lurking around. <laughs> I actually do, even though I'm, I'm not really supposed to be criminal. I have no clue. Looking for the fucking bench. Yeah, no, you gotta help. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking. Everybody should be in separate vehicles. Yup. So I can test that stuff because I know where it is. Oh, you know where it is, just up here, and you're holding out on us. I learned it in a bad way. Oh, uh, you got the government knowledge. Yeah, uh, accidentally. Yeah, that's why I always keep my ears covered. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely not fun, that's for sure. The door doesn't work for me, and I don't know if it's not it or if it's it. No, the door would swing wide open. But there's another door on top of it, if you get what I'm saying. The doors, the doors would swing wide open. Any hints or something? The doors would swing wide open. Yeah, that's a hell... That's actually a good hint, because... Most of us know where doors usually open. If they're smart. I don't know if it's in it city or out of city. It's, it's not oh, it's out of city. city. <laughs> uh, come to 923 and see if you can open both of these doors. But I'm telling you, we need duct tape. Yeah, golly. Wait! You can get the glue. Do you need the glue, maybe, to craft the duct tape? Duct tape should be a full item that we can no, get. No, should I be able to get duct tape from mechanics. We sell duct tape. Oh, that's smart. And we need dirty rags. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you're close. Or bandages. We tried to run uh, window cleaning yesterday. None of us got it. Yeah, I did window cleaning yesterday, trying to get it. I think you could only get it from going to prison. That's lame. That's okay, I'll go to prison. Piggy, <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like you need to get arrested. Let the cops catch you. Mm. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it works for me. Or maybe ask Nesby. She goes voluntarily there. She's already been there twice since she left the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, good luck. I'm so glad I'm with her because I can get her to do all the dirty shit that I can't do. Carl, are you still standing? Say 920. Yeah, I'm still in Sandy. I'm checking that. Uh, I'm wondering if there's multiple. They're like 923, just a little north of it. I don't know if I'm bugged out or not. So did you already check everything south of this area, or no? Um, south where? You mean south of Sandy? No, where he has been going, 923. Um, not all of it. I'm like, I'm trying to go to like spots that like I think there's doors that swing and stuff like that. Oh, 
start spraying. I'll actually meet you on 923 so I can bring you to this thing. Hi, I told me. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Hello, guys. Yeah, we're looking for a workbench. Uh, so I know nothing's there. Double swinging doors. There's no houses up there. Double swinging. Wait. No. Could it? It's an obvious spot. Yeah. I got one clue. It's. No, actually, two clues. But I can't discuss it with the chat, you know. So please don't do anything about that. They said double swinging doors. And then they said uh, it's not in the city. No, I've tried. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've tried that location. <laughs> That's the first one I went to, almost. I don't, I don't think there's anything the, in there. Yeah, in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, couldn't it be a local grocery store even? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wait. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is this? And I heard a door swing, but like it didn't swing, and I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm at the police station, so. I had to walk up to the cops and be like, can y'all arrest me for being too sexy or something? Like, leave me in jail for like 60 minutes. 60 what? Months. Assistance, license, interview, and supervisor. Okay, that's strange. I thought it would be if it was in prison. You had a sweet talker with the cops and material. <laughs> 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 would have been fun as shit, though. No, officer, don't take my dirty rags from me, please. Yeah! <laughs> I need you for not legal stuff. <laughs> Gosh, they would have been, that would have been fun as shit, dear. We need to make rims. Had to make a license plate while I've been here for community services. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, but it looks cool. I wanted to be. I wanted to go into it and check it out. You know, it could be this obvious. You know, but it's not. I can definitely tell that. So double swinging doors. Oh, nothing at 9.43 or 9.45 either. Yeah, I've been at old Trevor's house, but he doesn't have anything either, so... Right on. What the heck? There's two grocery sellers now? What the heck? 
in a jail? You probably can. You can should the job, though. Nah. Oh, but you should true. be able to. Yeah, I've checked uh, most of the stuff in Sandy that I know it's open. I haven't checked the gun shop yet. I'm gonna go there and check. Oh, that, this building is iffy. That's for damn sure. Uh, that's for Giuseppe. 1017 Giuseppe. That door, you can go through it. <laughs> Are you talking about the door that brings you to the void? Yup! The door in Sandy that brings you straight to the void. Down by the sandy area, or the beach kind of looking thing. I'm gonna check out 728. I doubt that it's at the power plant though. You mean the human lab? The human lab is accessible. No, this is power plant, homie. Oh, yeah, because I know the, um, I know the human resource lab is open, but there is nothing in there. Well, I think you need actually to be put in there to be able to get that stuff. Let me check the uh, farm by the uh, by the highway. That door should open. Are you talking about the prison? No, uh, the farmhouse by uh, seven twenty one. Isn't it? I think it's seven twenty one or seven twenty two. Is there one of those that there's a farmhouse where you can walk walk into? Check in here too. Oh, Giuseppe, I found your car. Which one? No, I'm right there. The behind one, you. the spaceship? Yeah. Oh, he's been here. Oh, I found the table. Did you? Nice. Yeah. There you Bro, go. Looking? Yeah. Which door is it in? Wait, you just went to a different one? Oh my god, I'm pissed. Alright, now we all know. Okay, I'm coming to you guys. Coming.
Yup. Where is that information then? I kind of forgot about it. So he was... Wait. He was at the power plant? So...
Actually, fast. I need your girlfriend out about now. Yeah, we need to borrow her. Yo, not. What up, Larry? Uh, I'm gonna send you some. Ooh. Oh, Larry, did you I look at my? I don't, oh. Look at my text message I sent you. I 
ass restaurant. <laughs> he never was anything down, we heard him. I heard that shit. Eat the bat. Talk to the government about getting that place shut down for <laughs> personal um, hygiene. Am I really about to be the first person that goes to jail on the new system? Probably. Are you surprised? No. I don't even think something needed to be implemented for that one. <laughs> Mr. I'm going to steal a cop car twice yesterday. <laughs> Funny. The only time that we're going to get caught is voluntarily again. <laughs> they get a little W though, right? I don't fucking... I don't know how to make you dirty. Hey, I'll... I'll put him on a, I'll, I'll give him on a chase, you know? Nah, not me, I'm just gonna straight up and shoot up with them. If they want me, they're gonna have to work for it. And you're trying to go away and do all the jobs that come back loaded. <laughs> I'm coming out with a full inventory. <laughs> Sure, you know, they follow you out first beforehand. I know, they're gonna know. They're not gonna forget. Even if I fly back, I'm gonna be right outside of PD. Just waiting. <laughs> I'm trying to go back. Send me back, man. You just see all the cops hiding inside of PD, not coming outside with me just standing there. I'll meet him at prison. Repeat, so. Blue, where you at? I'm at LF. Taking my laptop now. Right, I'm coming with you. Okay, in queue, babies. I need like 150 experience to go. I had to give up a B plus yesterday. Tell me I'm gonna win the car right now. Did you put the experience away from A tier? I don't have enough uh, scrap metal on my clothes. Is it in it up Yo! Dash? Yo, no, I did it! Hot oh, damn. Do it, and where are Five you? I'm, I'm, I need to buy like five of them off you, or if not ten. I need to buy like 20. I yeah, make that like 40. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you just make it? Right. 500 above. What the fuck? You're high. Yep. Oh. I'm here. Sorry, you got a burger shot of the airbrook. Hey, that daily now. Yeah. I didn't look at it. Um, give me like, give me like, what's the price on? Just keep in mind they go single stacks. We can't stack them. Okay. Uh, give me like five or five or seven. I'll be there in a second. Right after I get these rags off, Larry.
guys right now. The number figure. Coming to you right now. Gross. Yeah, don't worry, man. Yeah, I'll put you as a mod. I'm gonna need more actually. I got a beat here, we can do here in a for another like uh
I'll wait till Michael how to do that about to have the cleanest restaurant in the city. Are we charging for the controllers? Is it five thousand? Thousand. Okay. For someone, uh, someone put one of those in my car one time, never took it back out, and I swiped that shit. Happy.
I don't know. No, not. We got a problem. What's that? The tapes need a stack in order to do it. Need a stack? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Play for another what? Another hour if I got hit. I love the you, Carl. My very you, you have never heard that before. That's a strange one.
Yeah, you wanna do this B here in a second, Lair? Grab a repair and then I'll meet you there. Alright, I'm headed to this spot right now. Hey Red, are you at the shop or are you out on a boat?
Hey! What's up? You can tell him I'm sorry, but we have like minimal time on this boost that we're trying to do right now.
I, I, I literally said that the other day, hey, like, fucking, we need a way to be out of school. Come I was talking to Vicky the other day that, um, I seen, I was in my apartment one day, bro, and I seen there was this one place that has it set where if you give keys to your personal car, it goes into their garage, like, and it's their car also. I have that, that, that's it's pretty like, cool. It's like how house keys are, like, once you remove it, it's gone, though, from the garage. convenient is that? It's the same fucking drop off. He's back behind us. Hey, we're a pretty key. We can yeah. wait up here. How many dog names did you buy from us? A 21, I think. Or, okay. yeah, yeah, 21. Uh, you had three bodies. Do what? You had three, you bought 18. Yeah, it's a 21. I have 11 like in one needs, car. Yeah, he needs 21 replaced, that's what he's saying. I have 11 in one car and 10 in the car I'm in currently. So if you would need, uh, I guess, I don't know if he's be reimbursed, but if it was, then it'd be 18 reimbursed and then 3 free, I guess. Uh, I'll bring him to you.
coming to you guys right now, I'm not. Pleased to see you. I trust you keep him well. We ain't, we ain't getting my beat class done. You can do it after, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, true, true, true. How much of that did you need? Uh, it was two five hundred. That means I'm done for today. <laughs> Should he uh, trigger? It's nothing to worry about. So, yeah. <laughs> we can't raid. Nobody to raid. Ah. Well, well. I'll catch you guys later. Have a nice evening.
shot and the wire. And peel off. It's time to take stock. Got one, you know? Yeah, bring it out. Have you got a lot in there? Oh yeah. No, I'm shaking it, so it sounds like a lot, eh? Despite a hair-raising week, the gold gypsies remain optimistic. Uh, it's the biggest, roughest one. Yep. Eight grams. Second biggest one. Twelve. And this one. There's a half ounce just in three of them. Meanwhile, if Henry and Kelly's dry well mission pays off, it could bring them within spitting distance of their season target. The monster nugget is first on the scales. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 
fishing in the most extreme locations. Let's drop a bait down there and try to catch a monster. And catching some of the world's most dangerous fish. Så jag lärde mig inte tre då när jag hade kanske klart men jag ska ha haft en bak och sånt som jag lyfter och drar sidevis med en otroligt stark tre. Terry wanted to prove himself, recovering a car that's crashed down a hillside, but he's now decided it's too risky without. And the support legs met. Second in command is 26-year-old son, Ole Henrik. 
This year we have expanded the business with uh, a couple of contracts that uh, generates more works. Joe Roger and Ole Henrik lead a 10-man crew across three garages. It's a great teamwork. And together, they're responsible for a massive territory. We have over 3,400 kilometers of road to keep open. And we will. It's late afternoon and already dark when Ole Henrik takes an emergency call. Temperatures below minus 10 degrees, a milk tanker making deliveries was heading back to base when it approached a bend. A ridge of snow obscured the curb. The tanker cleared the ditch, then plowed off-road, jackknifed, then tipped. It's now up to 10 meters from the tarmac in a deep drift. The driver's been taken to hospital and the tanker trailer took a big hit. It's only six months old and is worth 300,000 euros. We need to start to uh, help us with this. Both Joe Roger and Ole Henrik are busy, so Torstein will have to take charge. It's his third season as a road rescuer, but Torstein also brings 10 years experience as a mechanic, working on buses and big trucks. Torstein is a nice guy to have on the team. He's a guy that knows a little bit about everything. Torstein takes the rotator, a 20-ton rescue truck with a platform winch that turns 360 degrees. It's a short 20-kilometer drive to reach the location. Torstein wastes no time in assessing the tanker. I walk around the truck to get a good overview of the damages. Everything is uh, very destroyed. He calls the owner of the tanker for an update on the driver. The driver is over the hospital and uh, some uh, smaller injuries. Uh, all the most. Rest the better time. The truck is staying deep in the ditch. It's uh, also a lot of damage on the cabin of the truck and uh, a little damage at the trailer. It's a complicated crash scene. Torstein now thinks he's come undergunned. I need some extra hands. I'm on call the ESAP and uh, the big rescue truck. He makes the call and reaches ESAP, a 22-year-old rookie who only started working in Bumahala last season. I was on another mission with the uh, big truck and had to hurry up and uh, get the Torstein. As ESAP drives, Torstein briefs him. I think we need the two trucks to get it uh, from there. Then, as he waits, begins to plan the rescue. The plan is to disconnect the trailer from the truck and pull up uh, the trailer first and the truck afterwards. It will be a two-part rescue. First, he'll disconnect the trailer from the truck. Then, he'll bring in the big tow truck to the rear with the rotator to the side. The big truck takes one wire to the rear of the trailer the rotator's boom connecting to a sling around the trailer body. As the big truck pulls back, the rotator will stop the trailer from tipping and bring it sideways towards the road. They'll then reposition and repeat the operation of the truck, pulling it back from the tree and then to the side. Right on cue, Isak arrives. Torstein brings him up to speed. Torstein's plan relies on being able to separate the trailer from the truck. They're connected by a kingpin, but the force of the crash rammed the trailer's drawbar beneath the truck, and it's jammed in tight. This is a big problem. We have to solve this before we can build the trailer up of the ditch. Son Eirik are rescuing a trailer that unhitched from its truck when heading up the hill. The support legs are buckled, risking it crashing down and sliding back on the ice. Torn needs to act quickly. The trailer park blocks a main road, and with one lane still open to traffic, it can cause a major accident. Can you 
you take this truck from there, no? Uh, maybe, yes. Because I need to have my towing truck in yeah, front. That's no problem, maybe. The driver fires up the engine to remove his truck. But there's another problem. That's not yes, there. Then? The pipe that feeds the trailer's air brakes was damaged in the crash. If Torque can't fix the leak, the truck will keep losing pressure and its brakes will not release. Try now and see. Try. He jams the pipe into the chassis to seal the leak. It's ready. You can go. You can ride. Go. Like that, <laughs> it's a temporary fix, but works well enough to get the truck away. Torn's attention turns now to securing the trailer. He drives his tow truck around to the front. Then Eric directs him in. Oh, I have to see if we can reach the kingpin for this. And then I have to lift it. Try and see if I can take it to the top. Tort's plan is to extend the forklift from his tow truck and attach it to the trailer's connection point, the kingpin. If this works, he could tow the trailer to the top of the hill to safety. Now I put uh, on a special semi GoPro. He's gonna connect in the kingpin of the trailer and then we can lift it up. He attaches the coupling, the same tank he used on the truck that was towing the trailer. Now he needs to line up the forklift beneath the kingpin. I said it's a big leap for her that I have. I think uh, we get a little bit problems to get under uh, my forklift because this is uh, like this and here we are like this. So I think it's uh, too high to get under. No, so if we need a woman let, also for we trail a bill for long back before, no? I stopped when I get next to come into the road. Now when I go backwards with the big truck, I like standing and looking where I'm gonna go. Because this is not easy. You have to be 100% straight. If not, then this in pin not fits in the GoPro. Yeah. Eric helped me directly in the right position. The gap beneath the trailer is tight. If they don't connect, the trailer can slide back. But it's touch and go whether the forklift will reach underneath. Bumper.
now they can try to separate the coupling. Torstein has to do it the hard way. He's going to force the drawbar free. Finally, we could disconnect the hatch lock, and uh, then we can pull it backwards. With the truck and trailer separated, Torstein can continue the tow out. Now we have to move the rescue truck to get to the other angle, and then we have to close both lanes. We have to call the road authorities and tell them that we close the road. Torstein makes the call. The evening rush hour is about to start, so the road authority gives Torstein little time for the rescue. We have 30 minutes before we have to open the road again. They complete the rig. Then power up the winches. The tree is empty, having made its deliveries of milk, but still weighs over six tons. Break 
under the strain. Torn must creep the rescue truck backwards as Eirik winds the forklift in. Det blir en sån här glad. 
and then we find the right parts and now we can get the brakes off and that have to be enough. So, men we får bara ice to think of. But I can be brems up also and from about what I say. Todd solution should make the trailer brakes release, but he won't be able to apply them during the tow. Yeah, this is just um that. No. It's a risk, but he has no option. So in heavy traffic and worsening weather, he needs to get the trailer away to a safe place now. Yeah. I take the trailer to a big parking place to the control station and we have to park it there. With no working brakes on the trailer, Tord takes it slow. At the parking area, he catches up with the Slovakian driver. The coupling for the trailer has failed once, and Tord fears it will fail again. I tell the truck driver, you have to change this before you go anywhere. Maybe he go and he lose it again, that can be a big catastrophe. That's not the driver's only problem. <laughs> He's had a disastrous day. <laughs> but Tor can only see a bright future for the family firm. I'm very happy now. When I use I think for work like this. He knows everything you can do wrong, so he's a very clever man to only be 18 years old. In the far north, Torstein and Isak are partway through rescuing a nearly new milk tanker worth 300,000 euro. The trailer's away. The truck is still stuck fast in deep snow, and now Isaac spots another problem. Wait, my Ryan, do that. There is a big tree stump. We have to try to remove. If they tow the truck across the stump, it could rip into the chassis. When you go, when you're going to throw a windshield, when you're going to pop a bullet, you're going to lose your life. So I go and I use the chainsaw. In a country with more than 10 billion trees, chainsaws are essential equipment. Torstein gets to work. After I have sold it to the chainsaw, it's like you can pull it away with the wire. Yeah. Finally, we can uh, start the rescue of the truck. The plan is for the big tow truck to pull from the rear as the rotator controls a sling running around the tanker body. This will stop it from tipping as it's pulled back towards the road. First, Torstein calls the road authority to stop the traffic. He gets the all clear. Yeah. Now, he can begin the tow. Two tow trucks pack 100 tons of pulling power. They begin to muscle the truck out of the snow. But it's rising up a steep bank, so they ramp up the power. But suddenly have to stop. The 20 ton truck is tipping. <laughs>
Men jag tror det bästa var så bra framåt på sidan var så på bakåt. If I just hook my wire into the trailer hitch on the car and pull it backwards, I would just destroy the entire car. It even crashed the boss's tow truck. Wow, you feel the turning car so turn up in some way, man. No more than that, but no more than that again for Kofi. Now he has to prove himself as a responsible rescuer. So what we're told is an experience in itself, but it's quite fun. He takes Tord's call. Tord gives me a call about a car that has skidded off the road and into the ditch. A car rescue should be in Teddy's comfort zone. But arriving on scene, he's taken aback. I didn't think it was this bad. The only thing that's holding the car up right now is that one tree. He now takes a closer look. Oh, <laughs> How we ended up in the ditch, I am not sure. Teddy finds a contact number for the driver, then calls him. I don't know. Some of them are shot on the other side. Yeah. The driver suffered no injuries in the crash and is close by. The car just spun at the top, uh, so we pushed in the brakes and uh, it just ran backwards and out of the road. It was a simple accident, but it's shaping up to be a challenging rescue. I think I might be able to do it with just my truck. Maybe. The trouble in this scenario is that wherever you try to pull the car, there is an obstacle you have to maneuver around. So there is a tree on one side, a bush on the other side, and a rock on the third side. Under the car there are tons of rocks. I thought that stuff was so wrong for him, but we see the vices of a popcorn. If I just hook my wire into the trailer hitch on the car and pull it backwards, I would just destroy the entire car. Teddy can't risk wrecking the car. If he does, Tord will have to pick up the bill. This job is not easy at all. I'm gonna be a little bit in front of him. I'm gonna use my boom at the back of my truck. I'm gonna lift it gently. I'm also gonna use my rear winch as well and uh, hook it to the front wheel of the car. First, Terrier will angle his tow truck across the road. The front winch will run over the boom to a rear wheel to lift the car up clear of the rocks. The rear winch will take a wire to the front wheel. Then Terrier will wind in gently, controlling the movement of the car to avoid wrecking the chassis as it's pulled back onto the road. I started connecting two straps, one to the front wheel, one to the back wheel. Most people don't know that actually the rims is one of the strongest parts of the car. I haven't broken one yet. So I said, I'm going to sit here and drive the lap and drive the lap and drive the lap and drive the lap. Then we'll take a little step. Teddy has got it all worked out. But the more he looks at the car, and then at the rocks and trees, the more doubt begins to creep in. I think I need two trucks for this one. I only have two winches, but I need a third one just to be safe, so the third one could pull it backwards while I'm stabilizing it and pulling it sideways. He comes to a big decision. First, I make a plan to try and use only one truck, but I figure out that I need another one. So I call the man himself. I call Tor. Risks tipping their tow truck. Vad ska vi göra? Det är en bil. Ja, det var så lite annorlunda. Isak goes to move it. Then. Lovely. The roads closed, but some drivers ignore the signs. Vi är på här och går lite till att rasa med det. Now the tow truck's in a better position. They drop the support legs for stability. Then continue the rescue.
position it so it's only uh, takes so long. The truck completely blocks the road. And the is the last one. Torstein re rigs to finish the job. One leg's now clear. Torstein calls the road authority. Hey, Torstein, fire up, fire up, fire up. Hello there. The road reopens to the evening rush hour traffic. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it's uh, on the uh, on the left turn. It's the third turn over there. The truck's been heavily damaged in the crash. It will be towed to Overhaver, then assessed for repairs. All along the rescue went very well. The truck is no more damaged than it already was. In the south, rookie rescuer Tellius phoning his boss, Tord. Han sa ju Lena så inte tre den hade kanske klart men jag ska gärna ha den bak och samtidigt som jag löfter och drar sidevis med och två vinst och tre. Tellius wanted to prove himself, recovering a car that's crashed down a hillside, but he's now decided it's too risky without a second tow truck. I got the call from uh, Italia. He told him that he need help. He is afraid to do some more damage on the car. So now I have to go help him. Yes, you have a Tord and Eirik are close by. So Terry is not waiting long to see if he's made the right call. I see that this car is really out of the road. I see the car is standing into a big tree. They have like all the things that are like that. And s***. They have got a nice smell over there. When you come to this place, it looks very easy. But when you go around the car and you're looking under the car, beside the car, you see there is a lot of problems. Uh -huh, we have a small work. <laughs> not small, but this is not so... Uh... Good to take from this place. The challenge with this work is that we have to take it uh, very carefully from this place. If not, you can destroy the uh, diesel tank, you can destroy a lot of things under the car. Well, so you can see, I think you might have it. I'll thank you. I'm glad I called. This is uh, better do with two trucks. I have to think a little bit, we have to make a good plan. It's easier to take a big truck but it's on the side. This is more work if you don't want to destroy a lot of things. I know where I make a plan. You should actually stop here, right? You should not so very much at the hand to sit there up there in the weather, and so hold the bar steering up on. The more it's on, so the more you have to screw up the other. Tord's truck will position towards the back of the car, running one wire down to the rear wheel. Terry's truck will stand alongside, taking a second wire high up from the boom to the rear wheel, with a third wire to the front. They'll then raise and pull the car at the rear, as well as pulling sideways at the front, working slowly to ease it towards the road. My plan is that uh, we can regulate the trucks downwards, sideways, and we can take it a little bit up. Then we have full control for the car. Tord and Terrier make final checks. Then begin the tow. Yeah. This 
was well done work. No damage, you see? Nothing. You see, it's a lot of rock, but everything went fine. Make a good plan, then everything is good. Everything, the same thing happened in this place. If you've not done this work before, don't try to do it alone, because then you destroy the car in pieces. Towards sellouts may have saved the car from further damage. We don't make any scratches. It's good. But it's still been badly beaten up by the crash. Now look at the man, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, I know can drive it. Why should big uh, damage under the car? Have to go to garage with this. Everything went fine. Good work. I like things like this. You have to use the hand a little bit. They load the car onto the flatbed. Then Terrier drives to the garage in order. Turns out he made the right call. All my men have been working uh, good together. So I'm proud of my men. But it looks a little bit difficult. On scene are Erland and Pierre Inger from Torts Garages in Rodal and Finharad. They're experienced rescuers, but need the boss's help. He said that uh, maybe we can take uh, one of my small truck and we can try to drive it around the truck and trailer. Uh, so I have to go to them and see what I can do. Towards facing an 80 minute drive west. He sets out in a small light tow truck. Approaching the farm, he gets his first look at the rescue. I think we have a little bit work there. <laughs> I think it's almost tip over to the side, so we can go tricking. <laughs> so joins the Kvinharad crew and gets the full picture. I know it's uh, been raining a lot. The ground is really wet. And that's not good. There is no rocks, it's no stones, it's only mud. The truck with trailer and cargo weighs a total of 37 tons and it's sunk into the soft ground. Torn and his team have got themselves in a massive, muddy mission. Now we're in front for the river. Yeah, I'm on that to that water. I think you have to if Tord tries to tow out from the rear, the truck could tip. So he has to get his tow truck to the front. But the truck blocks the farm track. I go looking a little bit and see maybe I can pass the truck. I might think the worst thing that the truck near for like some fur that they got at you. Also like some cold Indians on. It's a big risk. If Tord goes too far in the mud, he'll bog down but there may be enough space to keep one set of driving wheels firmly on the track. Except there's another problem. Now there's a pole close to the track. Uh, I think there is no space enough. Can we have a lot of money? 290. I think it's 255. My tow truck is 255. And uh, when we're checking, I think it's about 270. But the problems, then we don't we have to come to this side, not like this. To get through the narrow gap between the truck and the electricity pole, Tord will have to angle his tow truck in. But that means taking the driving wheels further out into the mud. He decides to give it a go.
see that it's not space enough. Well, I quite think so. The house to give up, make a new plan. Well, then if you start f***ing up there, so can we have them back, you know? No, I don't stop f***ing up there. You have more fun, then. Todd needs to explore all his options. He goes to talk to the farmer. Hey, people back down there in there. If Todd drives further out into the field, there's a chance he'll get round to the front of the truck. If not, he'll just get himself stuck. The ground is so soft that uh, when you try to go down with your feet, you only go down. It's really wet. It's full of water and it's only mud. I think this is not the right ground for... I think it's too soft. Whatever his fears, Tor feels that he has to try. I think this is not a good idea. <laughs> he reverses down the track. Then picks a route along the field edge, hoping to find further ground. I want to try to drive it up. I see it's so soft and it, the, the wheel is full of... Uh, and everything it starts sliding at once. He tries driving a few meters. I see that we have no chance. It's too soft. Then gives up. I can buy you. In the southern mountains in Eidfjord, the temperature's rising. Rain and warm winds clear the snow from the lowlands, signalling the end of the season. There's been a lot of jobs this winter, so now I'm ready for summer. Jim Legret is the boss of the Hardanga Villa Mountain. He's been an ice road rescuer for 35 winters. Very good, no problem. Outside, the wind rages. But inside the garage, all is quiet. Jones on shift with 24-year-old Urian. And today, they're both waiting for the phone to ring. The local farmer has been unlucky, drive off the road with his tractor. So now he's stuck between some big rocks. Close by, only a few kilometers from the garage, the farmer was chopping and clearing wood. With a heavy load in the front bucket and on wet ground, the tractor unbalanced, began to roll and was unable to stop. The farmer was fortunate that the tractor crashed onto rocks. They were the only thing stopping him sliding down the steep hill towards the road and the fjord below. Hey. We have to go up and help him. Uh, we take two uh, pickup trucks. Uh, one that has a winch. Björn and Urien climb up the track through the forest. The road up to the excellent place is uh, a narrow tractor road and it's also steep. So we cannot get up um, any other tow truck. They reach the location and see the farmer who's uninjured and carries on working, but his tractor's in a tight spot. Uh, the challenge with the rescue is that uh, it's steep and the tractor is standing on a rock. Uh, so the rear wheels are not in touch by the ground. I don't know how heavy this tractor is, but maybe two, three, four tons, I don't know. Björn begins the plan, but soon sees lots of problems. It's not a big space, and it's a big stone, so we don't know anything before we try. Björn plans to use the birch tree to anchor a pulley to angle the wire from the winch back down to the tractor chassis. Arian climbs up the hill to rig. 
Jens brought his dog, Sissy. Because this rescue's off-road and snow-free, it's a chance for Sissy to get out of the garage. The stress, you know, is to try to pull it with the winch and the small truck. Hopefully it's strong enough. Arian brings the wire across from the pulley. Then Björn attaches it to the tractor chassis. Start trying to pull. He powers up the winch. But the tractor's not moving. The pickup winch has not got enough power. They need to try something else. Arian climbs into the tractor. This tractor is uh, maybe a little tricky to get it up, so we have to use some force. If he guns it on the next pull, the tractor could help itself climb up. Hopefully we manage to take it up. By locking the tractor's differential, Arian should maximize traction across both driving wheels. Yeah. He's steering and reversing, the same as I'm trying to pull more. The tractor's stranded on the rocks. The rear wheels can get no grip on the ground. What? What? We're here. Even in the north of Norway, in Overhalla, no winter lasts forever. But there's still plenty of work for fourth generation rescue boss, Joe Roger. It's uh, raining a lot lately, so it's time for an accident to happen. When daytime rain freezes overnight, it creates driving conditions as hazardous as heavy snow. And this morning, it's chaos. Oh! The emergency calls come in thick and fast for Joe Roger and his son, 26-year-old Ole Henrik. We have over 3,400 kilometers of road to keep open. I'm not with her Father and son prepare to head out. We got a mission high up in the mountain. It's a truck and a trailer going out to the ditch and lying on the side. On a mountain road that crosses into Sweden, the truck and trailer delivering ingredients to a bakery hit ice, lost control, then crashed hard into the ditch. This will be a three-man mission, with 22-year-old rookie Isak joining Ole Henrik and Joe Roger. I will take the rotator and Isak will take the big rig. It's an 80-kilometer drive from the garage. And once they arrive, they waste no time in assessing the scene. Out from what the driver says, it was the right wheel that got uh, driven outside into the ditch. He is now stuck. This is the result of uh, what uh, icy roads can do. The truck is uh, 27 ton, and uh, the trailer is uh, 18. The heavy load is carried in two shipping containers, making the rescue more difficult. If the containers shift, Joe Roger runs the risk of them separating from the truck and trailer. Now, our plan now is to uh, unhook the truck and trailer and put it piece by piece. So we are going to use the rotator to uh, hold it sideways while we uh, use the big truck to pull it front. Joe Roger will position the big tow truck to the front. The rotator truck will pull alongside. The big truck will take wires to the front of the cab. The rotator will control two chains running to the container. Having unhitched the trailer, they'll first pull the truck upright. Then re-rig, taking the wire low down to the truck wheels to bring it sideways as it's pulled onto the road. They'll then repeat exactly the same method to recover the trailer. So I hope 
Is this the best plan? Can you float? We have to come on with plan B. No, I got to call the road authorities and tell them that we are on site and we have to close the road. To move the tow trucks into position, they have to stop the traffic. But this is a main route into Sweden. Ole Henrik agrees to reopen it after they've rescued the truck to allow traffic to pass before they tow out the trailer. They begin to rig. Then Joe Roger brings in the rotator truck. Ole Henrik climbs up the container sides. The winch wires attach to the containers using special fixings called lifting lugs. These slot into recesses in each corner. It was really slippery to climb up to the containers. Lugs in place, he then attaches the chains. Um, always two centimeters too short, every time. Joe Rogers ready to start the pull, but then realizes he's forgotten something. They can't pull up the truck with the trailer still attached. We are going to deattach the trailer before we start to pull the truck. Isak removes the security bolt for the tow bar. Now they're ready to start. As Joe Roger begins to wind in the winches, the tow wires tighten. Until... Programmet presenteres av 5G fra Telia. Programmet presenteres av godfisk.no. Oppskrifter på nett. Vi vet at sunn mat er viktig for folk. Og jo billigere sunn mat er, jo sunnere spiser vi. Ikke sant? Derfor fortsetter vi å låse prisene på over 100 litt sunnere varer. Som for eksempel hinderpølser av kylling og kalkun, kyllingfilet og sunn bifstrimmer. Så kan du trygt kjøpe litt sunnere varer i Kiwi, like mye som september i fjor, helt frem til 1. januar neste år. Prisene kan ikke gå opp, bare med. Since the truck, the tow out should be easier. The tractor begins. It's blocked, and the field is so muddy, if he tries to drive around, he'll get stuck. Torts forced to think on his feet to find another plan. I think I have to use one uh, tractor in the front and I think I use uh, the big towing truck back with a long boom and we have to lift the trailer a little bit. Todd thinks a large tractor will be able to drive through the mud to get to the front of the truck. But first he needs to find one and one that packs enough power for the pull. He makes a call. Hello? I think the best thing we have for this one. Vi må bare gjøre sånn, det er ikke noe annet måte å gjøre, vi har ikke sjans å komme av forbi, det er ikke mulighet her. Yes, I know. Tord struck lucky. Hva er takk i bare? Jeg får med noe snart. Jeg tror det er planen for det, det er den eneste måten. Big traktor, vann towing trucks. Right on cue, the traktor arrives. But Tord's got another job, before it begins the tie-out. Nå vil vi ta alle disse av. Jeg ser at denne truck, we have to unload that. I can bat it to Mario. If Todd lightens the truck, the tow out should be easier. The tractor begins to remove the bales. 
Torn and his team muck in, unloading the bales from the truck. This hay bales is about uh, four or five hundred kilo each. As the rest of the team work on the cargo, Erlend begins to rig the tow truck. The ground is so soft and wet, the tractor is sliding around like Bambi on the ice. Even the tractor's losing traction. Just like Torch Rescue, it's getting bogged down in the mud. trying to rescue one that's stuck on the rocks, but it's proving to be quite the challenge. You see that uh, this winch on the small truck is not strong enough, so this won't go. So we have to find another solution. Björn brought his pickup because the track is too small for his tow truck, but the winch is underpowered. It's a problem that needs a clever solution. Björn has a brainwave. He'll use a tractor to rescue the tractor. So we have to get my tractor and try it one more time. Björn heads off to collect his tractor, leaving Urien to move the pickup away from the track. I'm not going to go to the pickup, right? I'm going to go to the pickup. As Urien squeezes by, Geraint's back home, giving his tractor a check over. It starts on the bustle. He drives up the forest track. Then needs to get past the tractor. Trouble is, he's much wider than the pickup. directly above. Marion walks up to plan a clear run for the tow strap. Björn then reverses it. We have to take it straight back so we have a long drop and up to the my tractor and then we're going to try to put it straight up. They attach the tow strap then prepare for the pull. Björn is uh, steering the tractor and reversing it so maybe it will help me to get it up on the road. It's still a big ask. The tractor's wedged in the rocks. It's a long pull, and Björn's tractor will need to find grip on the soft ground. Worse still, he's still not sure that he'll have enough power. I don't know how much my tractor will take, so we just have to see. Now we can start to... Pull again and uh, get the job done. Yeah. Björn takes up the tension, then begins to pull forward. He winds up the power, trying to bounce the tractor out. But all he's doing is digging holes. Overhaller, 
Joe Roger and Ola Henrik's rescue of a container truck has come to a sudden stop. The chain and the lock popped out of the container, and it changed the swing and hit some plastic on the truck. If this uh, heavy chain hits people, it can be life-threatening. Luckily, nobody got hurt. The lifting lug on the container broke free. You always have to stay sharp in this line of work because uh, anything can happen, and this is the proof. Because they can't rely on the fixings on the container, they now need another plan. The first plan did not work, so we had to come up with a new solution. And then we put two chains instead. Ole Hemrick climbs back up onto the container. We are putting our chain straight to the holes in the container. Plan B! <laughs> he removes the lifting lugs and hooks up the chains. And now we got the uh, hook the change in the container. Joe Rogers ready to try a second attempt. Yeah. Now we are uh, pulling. Isaac is pulling in the front and you're going on the side. Joe Roger controls the rotator truck's 10 ton crane winch, which is attached to the container. Isaac's using two 20 ton winches from the big tow truck, one to a drawbar, another direct to the chassis. Ole Henrik keeps close eye, directing the operation. The driver returns to his cab. He starts the engine to control the truck's brakes and steering. The truck's wedged against packed snow, but creeps forward. Ole Herrick calls a stop. They need to re-rig to get a better angle on the pull. Isak helps Joe Roger run a wire from the rotator to one of the wheels. It connects to a chain threaded through the rim. Then Joe Roger resumes the pull. Opportunity for Ole Henrik to give the truck a once over. Took uh, out the snow to see if there was any damage in it, and uh, almost no damage at all. So uh, the guy has been lucky. We're stopping traffic, hello. Yeah. We're going to open and let the traffic pass. I promise the road authorities that. Before the wreck, the truck is stopped. Before they rescue the trailer, they reopen the road. When there is a possibility to let the traffic pass before we have to close it again, we let them pass. Amongst the traffic is a snow plow, clearing slush before it refreezes overnight. Next they'll close the road, then try to recover the 18-ton trailer. tractor to help with the rescue, but now it's also getting stuck in the mud. There are still plenty of bales to recover from the truck before the tow-out can start. 
Tor tells the driver to use the forks to help free the tractor. Then the team continue unloading the bales. Tor decides they've lost enough weight from the trailer. Farm and door. And now we can start the work. They attach chains to the front of the truck. Because Tord can't get his tow truck around, it's down to the tractor to pull the truck forwards. At the back, he extends the boom of the tow truck. This is rigged to the rear of the trailer to lift and swing it onto the track. It's taken them nearly two hours to prepare. But finally, the rescue begins. The truck is moving and it looks good. But it's really steep down in the mud, so it's close to tip over, so we have to be careful here. Yeah, now I, I, I take a little bit of sand and away from the front wheel and clean a little bit. And then we push in a little bit harder. Programmet presenteres av 5G fra Telia. Programmet presenteres av godfisk.no. Oppskrifter på nett. Vi vet at sunn mat er viktig for folk. Og jo bindere sunn mat er, jo sunnere spiser vi. Ikke sant? Derfor fortsetter vi å låse prisene på over 100 litt sunnere varer. Sånn for eksempel på VG Littost, Makrelli Tomat og XXL Fulton Pizza Bun. Så kan du trygt kjøpe litt sunnere varer i Kiwi, like billig som september i fjor, helt frem til 1. januar neste år. Prisene kan ikke gå opp, bare ned. Dette er helgen. Helgen lever i en verden hvor man jobber syv dager i uken. Derfor har ikke helgen noe tid til å slappe av med smash, som man aldri ikke kan få noe av. Helgen får den i det. Hva er det? Hva var det? In Overhalla, Joe Roger and Ole Herrick have recovered the container truck, but now have to rescue the trailer. Since the first pull went so well, we replicate it and do it on the trailer truck. And then we close the road again for the next pull. With the traffic stopped, Ole Henrik guides the rotator truck into position. The plan now is to uh, attach two wires from the rotator, one in the wheel and one in the upper container. Uh, and then we're going to attach in the front of the trailer. Just like the last time, Ole Henrik has to climb up the container side to fix the rig. Oh, you got cable, right here. Yeah. He then works low down, taking chains to the trailer wheels. Let it out. The pull begins. for a commercial bakery. It weighs 18 tons, and the packed wet snow makes the pull even harder. Now we're trying to slide the trailer into the road. as well. 
Um, if it works, it works. Why change it? The trailer is up on the road, so the truck driver can come back and pick it up. continue his journey to the bakery and deliver this good stuff. All in all, good rescue. Tipping into the mud. 
Tord again repositions the tow truck to gain more control over the trailer. They re-rig the winch wires. Tord keeps stopping to check. He has to be certain that the truck and trailer are stable. Somebody have to come and fix the road after us because it's so soft. They have to fix it when it's not raining. The farm tracks being badly damaged. And now I have to help uh, the truck down to the main road again, and then we can load the trailer. The uh, truck can drive by himself. We not destroy anything, so the truck you can drive it. Now we can get from this place. I don't want to be in this mud. I like the snow and cold winter. And this winter has tested the ice road rescuers to the limit. There have been more weather warnings than ever before. In December, the authorities recorded a record-breaking number of car accidents. And in the mountains, north of Eithia, there was the biggest January snowfall for 100 years. Uh, the winter has shown us that it uh, has been a tough winter, but we are much tougher. To survive and thrive in the most challenging driving conditions in Europe has taken tenacity and teamwork. I'm happy about the criticism. The new guys has worked very well. Uh, now we can take some rest and then we can be prepared for the next winter. Or at least that's what Zorn thinks. Because there's always something to keep the rescuers busy. We go for one work, we think it was a big boat, there is only a small boat. Hopefully no problem, but you never know, you know, if you know. I think uh, Bjorn never can swim. The man can swim. So if I lose him here, he's in the bottom. And the next problem is, I'm not really sure if I can swim, so we cannot rescue each other. I almost killed Bjorn. <laughs> For me and Bjorn, this year has been a really good success. But hope the winter is soon back again. When you're working in the sea, you never know what's happened. It's done with a lot of snow. I think maybe the next winter will be much harder, but we are ready for that. We are the king of the sea. Probably. <laughs> ding, ding. Programmet presenteres av 5G fra Telia. Programmet presenteres av godfisk.no. Oppskrifter på nett. National Geographic. Vi mørker oss ned. Vi er julefilm på kanalen. Her er masser å se. Travlig julenisser, full aktivitet, og berge en lastebil. Det er forsvunnet med hens. Det er også på. Everybody happy. Kjør inn om Dallas i en skjebnesvanger bil, eller konkurrer i vitenskap om det er mer din stil. 
National Geographic's julekalender starter 3. december. This is wild Africa. It's the time during the day when Lions could just easily be sleeping on the other side of that bush in the shade. I'm not at the top of the food chain. Oh, wow. Three-toed, big, huge, heavy animal. In this kind of environment, you want to try to see them before they see you, for sure. place in the world is a mecca for wildlife. As a biology teacher, I've done a lot of talking about this place, and here I finally am, in one of the wildest places on earth. Formed 25 million years ago, the Great Rift Valley is considered the cradle of human evolution and it's one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. It's home to Africa's most iconic wildlife, known as the Big Five. Lions, leopards, rhinos, elephants, and buffalo walk these lands. And I'm on a mission to see them all. This is a special spot this special morning. Look at that. How many olive baboons are there? It's the nature shows that I used to watch when I was a kid. They got me so excited about wildlife. And right now, I'm living it. My Rift Valley Solo Safari South will be a 500 mile wildlife journey like no other through some of the most extreme environments on earth. I'll be tackling windswept deserts, towering escarpments, massive lakes, and deep gorges. My ultimate goal is one of the greatest wildlife destinations on the planet, the legendary savannas of the Serengeti. I specifically chose this time of year to begin this expedition. I still have a ways to go, but I've got to get to essentially what is the beginning of a race, the beginning of, of a marathon. The southern migration is fast approaching. When big animals start to descend on the Serengeti to eat, breed, and give birth. It's one of nature's greatest spectacles, and it's right where I'm headed. It won't just be tens of thousands of animals, it'll be millions of animals beginning a giant migration, and if I time it right, 
it's going to be an adventure of a lifetime. My first challenge is to cross the notorious Chalby Depression. A harsh mix of arid desert and wind-blasted flatlands. One of the toughest terrains in all of Africa. My target is Lake Turkana, the gateway to the Great Rift Valley beyond. But before I hit the desert, I need to find water. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Really? So I'm climbing down to a potential watering hole. As far as cliffs go, whew, the doozy. But doable, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to be my last climb. Rock is really crumbly. Sometimes you just have to believe. place for any kind of wildlife to survive so it's just as difficult for me as well survival and death out here but there are still some animals around that are adapted to these arid conditions there's some zebras down there those are grevy zebras the grevy zebras can survive for five days without drinking water they're looking right at me. They're different from other zebras in that they have really big round ears. They're the biggest of all the zebras. And they're by far the rarest. They have the very coolest of the paint jobs. We have different faces, we have different fingerprints. Zebras have different stripes and that's how they identify themselves. Normally there would be water. There would normally be a lot more animals, but since they're all gone, this just gives me a heads up that I've got some ground to cover. If I'm to survive my journey ahead across the Chalbi Desert, I'll need to find water. And my best hope rests with the remarkable tribe that call this desert home, the Gabra. Nomadic herders, they make settlements in the sand and find water in the arid wilderness. And they will be crucial to my chances of making it through the Chalbi Desert. It's all opening up here. Wide open spaces. Here goes. As I reach the outer edge of the Chalbi Desert, the forest becomes withered scrub. And I hit the eeriest environment I've ever encountered. And you hear that? There's these very bizarre trees. Weird. So weird. This dead looking forest is singing. The branches whistle a haunting tune. Ah, and I think I know why. Okay, right there. All these ants that are living inside of their little home, inside a thorn, they all have these little entrance holes and they act like a flute. So it's got these branches full of flutes that wind up collectively acting like a whole bunch of whistles. That's why this place has that weird sound. And oh yeah, they're coming. They're coming in force now and stinging. Ugh, getting in my facial hair. The fire ants that hollow out these thorns are feisty. 
and injecting me with venom. Ah, hi! The ants are already getting me. A whistling thorn acacia forest. It's just a totally bizarre natural ecosystem in the Chalvi Desert. No desert is the same. It just depends on where you're at, what kind of neighborhood you're in, and this is so totally bizarre. Leaving the Whistling Forest. I now enter the desert for real. The Chalvi was forced by ancient volcanic activity. A harsh expanse of black lava rock is ahead of me. Thank <laughs> you.